Welcome back to Progressive Web Apps for Beginner series. We're into the third video of our chapter four now. Today, we're going to talk about how can P-Ways further integrate with host OS. Today here with me again is Diego. So last time we were talking about better UX for PWAs and we mentioned, you know, OS theming, we mentioned window controls overlay, but today we're going to dive so much more deeper into a list of things. And I actually want you to go through this list with me because uh, I think the names are self-explanatory. So it's kind of cool to learn all the things that you can do now with the web platform in general. Sure. So the first one is run a NoS login. What do you think run a NoS login does? Does it mean that when I open up my computer that I can automatically turn on? No? Bingo, that is it, you oh. nailed it, yeah. So, so PWS can actually do that. Uh, we have shortcuts. We have- Shortcuts, I know this one. This one would be like, I think if you right click on an icon on the taskbar, there would be like more than just open as a task, yes? Yes. And it actually, let's say, that will allow you to uh, go into a deep link of your app. We have then file system access. Um, maybe open up files from my computer? I'm indeed, 343. <laughs> I know. Protocol handling. Th this one I actually don't know. Tell me more. OK, so we're going to go into that one in a bit. Link handling, file handling. Uh, let's say that they will give your PWA superpowers. And finally, web share and web share target. So we started talking about run an OS login, what you said, completely accurate. It enables the installed app web application to just pop up when you log into the system. Um, do you think any use case where this would be really useful for PWAs? I think there are certain apps that we always wanted to start running when you start your computer, right? Like your daily tasks. Uh, sometimes I think it's Outlook and Teams as a setup that, you know, for my uh, productivity wise, that I want those to open as I open up my computer. Um, I don't know if uh, there's other apps for personal use, but those are kind of some, some of the use cases came to mind. Best cases that, that you could mention, you mentioned them. Generally, when it comes to instant messaging and productivity apps, those are the type of things that we want to appear when we log in. So, good, good. We have shortcuts, uh, and you know, shortcuts is, as actually you mentioned as well, it allows developers to deep link into the application from an icon that in this case could be in the start menu or in the home screen if it's a mobile device. This is something that is enabled in the manifest file. So, uh, and we're gonna see that this is kind of like a common theme with most of the features that we are working with at the moment. You need to keep an up-to-date manifest file because it's becoming more and more, not only um, a source for the description and appearance of how your application will be once it's installed, but also it enables a lot of uh, very advanced web capabilities. So file system access, you nailed this one as well. It enables access to the platform's file system for reading and writing files. Awesome. You know, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, feature support on Windows, Mac, Chrome OS, and Linux. And there's pretty much just, you know, three APIs that allow you to open a file picker, save, uh, open a save file picker, and just show a directory picker. Now, this is where, um, I'm going to explain to you a little bit more about protocol handling. Yes. So, you know, like when sometimes you go onto a website and you click on a link and this link might be of the, this link might start with a special string or protocol, actually a scheme that is, for example, the mail to, and then it has like a, an email address. That pops up like the writing to someone uh, if you have a native client directly, right? Exactly. So in this case, if I have mail to, uh, let's say, a Beth, then when I click on that, it's going to pre-populate your email address and open, in this case, let's say Outlook. So what if you had a PWA that is an email client and you want your PWA to be the one that opens up this type of protocol? This is what protocol handling does. It enables your installed web application to handle these protocols, which they could be there are several types of protocols. Some of them are predefined. I would say that the most known is mail to, mm -hmm. uh, but let's say that, you know, if you put this string web plus, 
and then you use a different word. So web plus mail, for example, you could define a unique protocol for your PWA. So let's say that if you have the uh, Beth PWA, you can put web plus Beth. And like whenever you click on this, it's your PWA that's going to that's gonna be uh, opening. Awesome. And guess where do we enable this one? In the manifest. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So um, going on in a similar vein, we have link handling and links and protocols, let's say that are uh, related, but it, when we're talking about links, it's more the traditional type of URL that we find. So in this one, it's a way that once you install the PWA, it enables the installed web application to open links that are within its scope. So if you go and you install, let's say the um, Twitter would be I'll a good that. example. Twitter, yeah. Let's say that you have the Twitter app installed and then someone goes on an instant messaging uh, client and they send you a Twitter link, then the PWA for Twitter is the one that is going to be uh, appearing. This is enabled automatically upon installation, uh, but the user can switch it off through uh, going uh, on Edge apps in the details page. So there's a little toggle that, that you would turn it on or off. Very handy. The next one, file handling. Uh, this one allows you to register and install web application as a handler for files in the operating system. Question, what happens when you double click on a doc file? On a what file, sorry? On a doc file. Oh, on a doc file. Mm, it opens up your document? <laughs> exactly, but generally it would open up your document in Word. Yes because Word is the application that is registered to handle this type of file. Correct. So the same way, like if you open, if you double click on a PPT file, it'll open PowerPoint. So these type of associations, let's say, and actually interesting fact, considering that the open office documents, so, you know, DocX, um, PPTX are open standards, mm -hmm. then you could create a viewer or you could create a PWA that could open this document and assign your PWA to be the file handling and even set it up as the default file handling. So think about that you might have this application that deals with a very specific type of file and you want to make it the default, or the default uh, app for, let's say, uh, text files. TXT files or, or comma separated values. So you can start seeing how PWAs are gaining more and more powerful capabilities that used to be reserved only for their platform specific uh, native counterparts. And another question for you, where do you think we enable this? Uh, is this still a web app manifest? Yes, it hopefully. It is a web app manifest, it is. It's And, and the file is getting so important to maintain complete for a really powerful, you know, integrated app that it's it's quite cool. Um, and the last two, which we're gonna touch today are, I would say self-explanatory, which is WebShare. Um, for WebShare, this one allows us to share content from the web application, um, and it's through a JavaScript API. So um, you mentioned Twitter earlier in, in the conversation. So, Let's say that you would like to share some text. Um, you could be able to share some text or some tweet by using the WebShare API. And generally what happens when you are, let's say, on Windows and you click on share? What would happen next? Um, what would happen is that the operating system or the browser, depending on where you are, would come up with uh, the share UX. And generally this share UX is either populated by, let's say, applications. So if I'm on the file system and I right click on a file that could be an image and I press share, then it's going to tell me, oh, you can share it with, let's say, uh, Twitter. You can share it with uh, your email. And it's kind of like a fast way of attaching the file uh, and populating the file with the image and then I can just, you know, send it quickly or I can just uh, create a tweet that already has the image uh, right. attached or I could uh, open it, for example, with uh, an application that would want to uh, modify it. So these type of things are 
things that let's say that if you have a PWA that is managing images, then you can put a button that would say share. And then once the user clicks share, it opens up the Windows share dialog. And there's, there's where you're gonna find your email, your, uh, let's say even some contacts oh, that, I see. that might be, yeah. So these so, are like some of the native uh, options that the, your, your local OS would know where to share them to versus that you, the developer would have to handle that on their own. Exactly. And this is where it gets really, really interesting because you're leveraging the infrastructure that the operating system already has in order to just create something that the user is already used to. The same way that it behaves on a native application will be the same way that it behaves on the installed PWA. Cool. So this is sharing content from the web app. Uh, the final one that we're gonna talk today is the sh sharing content to the web application. So, the previous example, we were talking about how, let's say Twitter, you can uh, you, you can have, sorry, an image and you can share this image. And if you share it to Twitter, then it will pre-populate it and create a tweet where you can write. So it turns out that Twitter is actually a PWA and you can actually share to with uh, the web share target. So the same way that you can share content from your application, you can share towards your application and define what your your application do with this? So, final question: Where do you think this one is enabled? I already know this one. All of them is in the manifest, anyways. <laughs> I don't even search indeed, my brain for indeed. the answer anymore. <laughs> so, these are just some of the features that are available for the platform that you can use right now to make sure that your application deeply integrates into the operating system. Thank you so much. Those are some super you know, handy and interesting um, OS integrations that we talked about today. I think right now I'm super excited to go try them myself. And here again, there are some resources if you want to read more about them, please feel free to explore these topics about progressive web apps on your own. In the next video, we're actually going to show you how to do some of these integrations through a demo.